back and send us a signal. And we go back to Andrea Kamazzo, the spacecraft operations manager, in the Rosetta control room to see what happens next. Hello, Andrea. Hi, hi, Andreas. Welcome back. Hi. It's now half an hour since we've lost radio contact. But we're pretty close to, to get this contact, uh, contact back, is it right? Yes, we have currently 10 minutes to go from the nominal time where we should get the signal back from, from the spacecraft. Uh, we have a bit of uncertainty on this, on this time for, for several reasons. The first one, we cannot predict absolutely with very high accuracy how the Eigen antenna is actually moving on the spacecraft. This is the first uncertainty we have. The second one, the signal will propagate towards the Earth and will be acquired by the ground station, which is located in Madrid, in Spain. It's a DSN, NASA DSN station. And uh, for them, it takes uh, uh, some, some time to actually detect this, uh, the proper signal and start decoding it properly, such that our system can interpret it. So this is what we have a bit of uncertainty on the, on the exact timing. I'm sorry to ask, but what if we don't get any signal back from the spacecraft? Well, okay, this is the, the major question also for us. Uh, that's why we are also here and we are very tense monitoring for it. Um, the, as a, there's no, nothing absolutely that we have to do immediately. Uh, for, with, with these missions, which are deep space, they are so far away that uh, there's nothing we can do in real time. So there wouldn't be any action that we have to take immediately to react, to save the spacecraft or to, to, to recover the, the, the signal. This would be impossible. The first thing we have to check is actually to do actually is to simply to wait. The spacecraft has a, a logic on board as an autonomy that can take care of problems. And in, if it, this is the need, then it, it does it, interrupts the radio link to the Earth and reestablishes only the, the link only when it's, it's safe. So this could uh, in, in have an interleave of, of time, which is in the order of, again, 40 minutes, where the spacecraft stops sending the signal to the Earth. So as I said, the first thing we would do is to wait Second thing in parallel with what we have to do is that to check that everything here on, on ground is set up properly. We have to check that we have configured the right frequency on the ground station to receive the spacecraft, that we are pointing in the right direction. So there are several checks that we can do, but active commanding to the spacecraft, we wouldn't do it for quite some time until we haven't explored other options that the spacecraft can actually do on its own, actually. We should simply monitor, it, monitor what it's doing. Okay, Actually, then let's hold on for a second sorry, and wait. Very good news. We have telemetry right now from the spacecraft. Congratulations. And it's absolutely nominal what we can see now. So, so far, we, we can see that the spacecraft has gone completely through the flyby phase. We cannot say anything on the behavior of the instruments on the science yet. This we have to wait and downlink the data that have been stored on board. But definitely the spacecraft has behaved properly. We are following the nominal plan. We cannot say anything on the detailed performance, but definitely the spacecraft is safe and went through the, the full flyby. This is great news. So Rosetta has now in, been in space for more than six years. What comes next? Well, now we are approaching one of the most challenging phases of this mission. If we forget for a second for, for the comet itself, we are flying far away from the sun. Already now we are in the order of 400 million kilometers from the sun and only few spacecraft have been at these sun distances with solar arrays. Uh, we have uh, three major things to do in front of us in the next 12 months. In September, we will uh, check the performance of our solar arrays. We will fly at fa uh, sun distances which are twice what we have, double what we have right now. So this will be a huge distance from the sun. We want to check out that our solar arrays are generating the energy that they are meant to do. The second thing we have to do is a huge correction maneuver, or correction is a deterministic maneuver we have to do in January next year. This is the first part of a maneuver we have to do to set the spacecraft onto a trajectory to meet, to actually match the one of the comet in 2014. And then in June next year, we will reach a sun distance where we cannot use the spacecraft as we are doing right now. The space is so far away from the sun that the power generated by the arrays is too low to keep it completely active. So we have to set it into a mode, which we call hibernation, where the spacecraft dedicates most of the power to maintain a benign thermal environment for all the instruments, which are, uh, is our payload, is our precious resource. 
The rest, we cannot devote it to the attitude control and to the radio link. So we set the space in a mode where we don't have contact with the spacecraft for two and a half years. This is quite long, it's quite challenging, but this is the only way we can fly such a mission. But you can confirm now that the spacecraft is in good shape and good health. Okay, we can have a first glance to telemetry. We definitely see the spacecraft in the mode where it's supposed to be. Uh, the spacecraft is continuing its flight plan according to the commands that are on board, and I cannot say anything more than this now. So it's already extremely good news. Okay, thank you. So in 2014, they will wake up Rosetta again and start the real mis mission, chasing the comet churyumov gerasimenko orbiting it and put the lander freely on its surface. This will be a milestone in spaceflight history. When ESA's deep space mission Rosetta passed the asteroid Lutetia just a few kilometers away with a speed of 40 54,000 kilometers an hour, and as we know now, has survived its complex procedure in a very good health. So now the only thing we have to do is wait for the first pictures that Rosetta's camera has taken of this strange celestial body, which has been so unknown even hours before. We expect the first images to arrive in the next few hours. We'll be back on air at 11 p.m. local time, that's 2100 UTC, or 3 p.m. in New York, and 6 a.m. in Tokyo. Thank you very much for joining us during this critical phase of the Rosetta mission, and join us in about four hours when we will present here the first images of the asteroid.